We're standing out in one of our Cabernet Sauvignon vineyards. This is located in the Coombsville area uh, at the southern end of Napa Valley. It's just east of the town of Napa. This particular Cabernet vineyard, beginning a little bit cooler, is uh, going through one of the phenological phases or physiological uh, uh, phases of the, se of the season, which we refer to as uh, flowering or bloom. Most people think of a flower like a rose with large petals with grapevines. The petals are, uh, are actually in the form of a, a little green cap over the ovary, and that cap is called the calyptra. And the cap gradually unfolds uh, at the beginning of bloom, exposing the male and female uh, plant organs. And just like any flowering process, there's a, a pollination, release of pollen, which then goes on to fertilize the ova. Um, in grapevines, there's four ova per uh, flower, so there's a potential of up to four different seeds per berry. And the extent of pollination will determine how many seeds uh, actually are form, get pollinated and form. And the size of the berry, the development of the berry, is related to the number of seeds. So you can have actually from zero up to four seeds per berry. If there's zero or one or two, the berry size is going to be considerably smaller. And so you end up with what we call uh, hens and chicks or you know, variable uh, seed and, um, and uh, berry development. And what this, uh, what this does when you have imperfect pollination is the clusters will be quite a bit lighter, the crop size will be low. This particular year, 2011, has been unseasonably cool and wet in May, and so some of the flowering has been delayed, and it's extended the overall flowering uh, or bloom period. And as a result, some of the flowering is incomplete. The clusters are going to be a little bit lighter than normal. So just briefly, uh, during the beginning of the flowering process, I mentioned the calyptra, or the, the petals of the flower. That starts unfolding and uh, exposes the, uh, the ova, and also the male parts, uh, the pistil and the anther. And um, the cap ideally will, will uh, uh, roll back and dry out a little bit and fall off pretty rapidly. If the cap is slow because of cool temperatures or wind or rain, it actually can stick and then you have the incomplete pollination, which is uh, undesirable in terms of the cropping level and it also causes uh, some uh, unevenness in the maturity of the grapes potentially at harvest. So ideally we have a, a short uh, flowering season, good pollination with the caps dropping off, and then we'll have good set. So in this case uh, we're looking at a little bit lighter crop in 2011. Other influences on bloom and the success of pollination have to do with soil moisture and the vigor of the grapevine. When there's a lot of water in the soil this time of year, it will uh, bring up a lot of nitrogen from the roots. And high nitrogen content in the grape tissues will some, sometimes interfere with bloom as well. One of the things that it does is it really increases the rapid growth as much as four to five inches in a single day. And if you look at the shoots, you can see that they're very elongated. They're growing quite, uh, quite rapidly. The tendrils are very active. They're climbing up towards the sun. They're looking for something to to attach themselves to. And when, when the shoots look like this, it indicates that the, there's very rapid growth and this potentially can interfere with pollination as well. In this particular grapevine cluster, you can see the bloom start up near the tip. These are what we would call shoulders or wings. In fact, the last one did not develop properly. And you can see here clearly that it looks kind of like a tendril and there's only a few flowers on the end. These have not, the caps have not opened up and so these have not started bloom yet the rest of the cluster is right in the middle of full bloom. So consequently, when we are looking at the overall maturity of the grape cluster, sometimes the wings might be a little bit behind, and this is, can be seen very clearly during coloration, or what we call a verasion. These shoulders may be still green and hard, where the rest of the cluster uh, is, is deeply colored and uh, obviously moving more towards maturity. In that case, we might come through and selectively remove the shoulders that are still green and this will provide more overall uniformity to the crop at harvest. This cluster shows very clearly the segmented uh, branches of the of the cluster shape. The overall uh, stem or rachis is divided into different branches. This is the main branch and then these smaller branches are what we call wings or shoulders and as I, uh, as I pointed out a moment ago these will um, develop at a slightly different rate 
and um, depending on the size of the wings and the shoulders that can in increase or decrease the overall uh, cluster weight and cluster size. So this is well uh, branched and this cluster will be you know decent uh, decent weight but as you can see there's still some dried caps on here and that will cause some of these berries to fall off. In fact what we often do to, to get an idea of what that's going to look like just gently rub and all those caps and those berries will fall off and as you can see this is going to be a very loose cluster there's not very very many berries uh, on this cluster compared to a normal year where this would be very full so what's occurring here we refer to as shatter or incomplete pollination as i said this 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 cluster is going to be a little lighter because there's not as many berries uh, on the cluster as what would be in a normal year so in effect the crop level will be a little lighter this year in general, a shoot may have up to three clusters per shoot. Three is, is fairly rare. Typically, one to two is more of the average. So when we're making an estimate of our cropping levels, we would look at the, the size of the cluster, the number of berries per cluster, and of course, the quantity of clusters per shoot. In this case, this particular shoot has two clusters. And as you can see, the lower one is a little farther along in the bloom process. This is 100% bloom, and this is in what we call berry set.